Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the problem with exceptions to the rule when we talk about size equaling strength. Because every time you mention that, someone says, but I know some guy, or there's some guy out there on the internet who is an exception to that rule. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill and my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, um, you know, this always comes up when I mention this, that the data on it is pretty solid at this point, that usually the amount of muscle mass you have, particularly in the muscles involved in an exercise relative to things like your height, can actually give a very, very good indication of a person's strength, and that for something like 99% of the population, you're going to fall within a pretty specific strength range on an exercise uh, if you have a certain amount of muscle mass and you've built that muscle without using large amounts of drugs as the anabolic stimulus. And again, there's pretty good data emerging on this. And people will argue, and they argue as if the exception to the rule somehow affects them. And I'm gonna discuss some of the problems with this, these exceptions to the rules. And what you need to understand is that I don't care if you can look around the world and find seven people who are an exception to the rule. If you spend the next week looking and you find seven people who break this rule all around the world in different endeavors, it's still not gonna change your personal results. You are personally still not going to be able to bypass this biologically just because you find six, seven, or even eight people somewhere in the world that don't seem to follow this rule. It is not going to change your personal results and you are not going to gain muscle without gaining strength and you're probably not gonna gain significant strength without gaining muscle, right? So you're, you're gonna, not gonna be able to avoid this no matter what. Now. The obvious one is always the really big jacked bodybuilder. Well, we've got data on that showing that when large amounts of drugs are used, that muscle strength doesn't always correspond to size. In other words, the amount of muscle that they gain doesn't always have a direct proportionate carryover to their strength uh, when it's tested. I mean, there, there was actually a study I remember years ago done on that. I linked it sometime before. I don't want to dig it back up. You guys can find it if you look hard enough. I have linked it before though. Uh, where that was actually looked at and they found per unit of muscle that the guys who were using very large doses of anabolics the bodybuilders weren't as strong as someone who had built whatever amount of muscle natural. So for the amount of muscle mass they had, they weren't strong, but they were still very strong. And the, the confusion comes in when you guys see someone train like a little bitch. That's what happens. You see all these pro bodybuilders who they are basically some of the laziest pieces of shit you will ever see in the gym. I mean, let's be honest, about half of pro bodybuilders, right? And you go watch them train, and you'll watch some of like Kai Green, watch Kai Green train, and watch him use little silly ass weights and fluff and pump, and, and I don't even mean do real high reps. I mean, he will do warm up weights for someone who's a strong 180 pound person. He'll do their warm up weights for sets of 10 or 12. Like, and that will be his 10 to 12 rep sets. I mean, he will, he will literally use weights that I wouldn't even personally warm up with. For me as a 200 plus pound strength athlete, I wouldn't even warm up with weights that light. They're below my warm up weights. And I do mean that literally on the lifts he does. Like I wouldn't warm up with something less than 185 on a barbell row, are you serious? Probably wouldn't even warm up with less than 225 on a barbell row. Let's just be realistic here. Um, but he'll be using 95 pounds or 115 or something silly. And you'll see him do these light weights and they say, oh, well see that's a perfect example. No, he can lift like that and still build muscle because of the drugs. He's actually not that weak because then what happens, you'll see the guy do that and he may have built that muscle training that way, literally lifting girl weights. And then people assume, oh, well, that must work for everyone. No, he's genetics and tons and tons of drugs, right? So then what happens? You watch him actually lift something heavy and then you're like, oh, never mind, he's not weak. He just doesn't train that way. He's actually strong enough to lift a heavy weight because he has all the muscle mass in spite of the fact that he built the, the muscle with drugs and not training hard. You go watch him incline bench and the guy can rep 405 on an incline bench. He can rep 405 on an incline bench. That's strong in anybody's world. That's strong in, in, a, in a strength athlete's world, right? You go into a powerlifting gym and do that and you're going to be considered a pretty strong dude. But he doesn't lift heavy, but the point is he can still produce force when he has to because the muscle mass allows him to do that. But he's still reasonably strong, but the drugs are a big factor there. So that's your one set of exceptions. Then your other is these other extremes. Well, there's this Chinese guy who weighs 170 pounds who benches 400 or 410 or whatever. Okay, how many of those guys are there? Because I'm going to tell you right now, just because that guy did it doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it. 
you're not going to be able to stay tiny and small and, and probably even get a 315 bench, let alone a 4 or 10 bench. Not going to happen. There are some people who do have some freak muscle fiber distributions, leverages, everything else. They don't train anything but those muscles, right? They don't train anything but for the bench press, and they're a specialist, and they've got a certain leverages and tendon insertions and muscle fiber distribution that puts them into a freak category, and they can pull that off on like one lift, sometimes two lifts. But you also need to remember a lot of these guys are, are oftentimes shorter or they've got certain muscles built through their body, but their lifts aren't always as strong as you really and truly think they are. Some of these guys are the exception. In other words, like people use max tuning and it's like, I always tell guys, yeah, you probably need at least a 300 bench to look reasonably jacked. He doesn't have a 300 bench. The guy, even at his heaviest body weight in competition, has never hit a 300 bench and he walked in weighing like 180. So he's a, a lean 180 at that point. That's not particularly small. He just doesn't have bodybuilder proportions, but he's still a sub 300 pound bencher. Like, so the guy can squat over 400, okay. Get him up to 500. I promise you his legs aren't gonna be small anymore. But you know, you do see the people like that who are a little bit of the exception to the rule, but then you look and he's got massive erectors and things like that. Um, you see some of these guys and you go, okay, well, they're somewhat an exception, but there aren't that many out there. And in the grand scheme of things, the guy isn't super strong. It's not like someone like that is freakish level strong. Again, I can tell you right now, if he got his bench up to 400, his upper body would probably be pretty massive. But he's, he's still a sub 300 pound bencher. So perspective here. Uh, his squat is a little skewed for his size. And I'll admit that. Or they'll use the other guys to look at, start looking at body weights and look at record holes and see, like, well, Jamie Lewis, you know, look at what he lifted. Uh, in the 181 those years ago and he broke those records, squatted over 600, pulled like 670 way in 181. It's like, well, number one, Jamie is jacked as hell. All right, it, that he is not what you're thinking of as a 180 pound guy under normal circumstances. He's short, he's below average height. The guy stays under 10% body fat. He is stupidly jacked. And when he did that, keep in mind, the guy is like 5'5 five, five or 5'6, five, right? That's, that's what he is. He weighed over 200 pounds a few weeks before he hit those records. He did a water cut to make the 181. So this is a guy who weighs over 200 pounds who cut down. He did a water cut. And he was already like 8% body fat. And then he did a water cut to make the 181 and then walks in and squats over 600. All right. He is a short 200 plus pound guy who's very, very lean most of the time. He's not small. When you start thinking of in terms of proportion, that is not a small dude. So what I'm trying to tell people is that you might see some of these people who you think are the exceptions to the rule or some people who just do really have good leverages or good neuromuscular efficiency uh, and all these other things. And you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, they're, they're, they're reasonably strong at some of these lists, but not that big. But it's like oftentimes, again, they're exceptions to the rule. And if they actually picked a couple of other different exercises, they would probably look a lot more jack. Like these guys actually oftentimes are jack. You're just maybe thinking their arms aren't that big or their delts. But it's like if they transferred some of their strength to some other lifts, if they did some weighted chin ups and got stronger, the overhead press with it combined with the fact of what they squat bench and deadlift, they would actually probably fill out tremendously just from those other lifts. It's that oftentimes they're minimizing some of the other muscles in their body so that they can maintain their weight classes. And that's something you need to keep in mind uh, with some of the guys you're looking at in strength sports. Some of them are intentionally avoiding putting muscle on all of their body. And if they actually just did a few more extra lifts and got really strong at those, they would probably be a lot more jacked. And then people are skewing what big looks like based upon the drug world. Right, and that's where the big confusion comes in because you look at some of these guys and you're thinking, well, they're not that jack. I'm like, well, actually, they actually are pretty big. For, for drug-free guys, some of these guys who are pretty strong that you are thinking of, barring like the Chinese guy who benches 400 at you know, 165 or whatever, barring those guys, these guys actually oftentimes are pretty jack for naturals. It's that people have their mind skewed of they think that if you're not big unless you're on a gram of test and that any of the biggest naturals in the world actually aren't that big because their mind is skewed by seeing guys who are on a gram or more of test and that's their idea of what's supposed to be big. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.